every single game out there has a beauty of its own. Like you cannot compare yourself to this game or that game or whatever. Like as long as you put your heart and soul into it, like you enjoy doing it or whatever, that's all that matters. You know, there's passengers for every train, man. Like somebody's going to appreciate it. I am joined by Nick Mihailov of Reniculous Games. Um, thank you for joining us, Nick. And to start My things friend. off, why don't you give us, in your own words, the sort of convention pitch of Lonely Sun? Well, Lonely Sun is really a new kind of iOS platform adventure space side-scrolling game. You know, mechanics-wise, it doesn't really... It's nothing new, but basically the whole point behind the game is it puts you right in the middle of a of a new kind of fledgling solar system. And you are the guiding hand of gravity. So basically, as you know, like every solar system has a sun in the middle, but also it has planets that need to go around it. Hence, you know, every star needs company. Mm. <laughs> so the whole point of that game is basically you have five levels that you need to go through for each of the five planets and all you got to do is collect planet cores so you're using gravity as a game mechanic basically you go up and down every single level has like a different gravitational pull so some of them have less some of them, some of them have more which kind of adds quite a bit of difficulty to the whole thing but basically you collect planet cores and then at the end of it once you've completed each level, you basically give birth, for lack of a better word, to a new planet that basically starts orbiting, you know, the, the lonely sun. And why is it lonely? Well, again, you can't just have a sun or a star by itself. You need something to kind of go around it. So at the end of the game, long story short, once you have all five planets completed and already alive and rotating basically the sun ignites the sun ignites and basically becomes like a full-on regular sun you know for the lack of a better word but yeah but that's basically it it's a space adventure game where you use gravity as a game mechanic and you have to go through five different levels to um build five different planets to go around the sun cool um the thing I wanted to talk about first was what kind of really caught my eye when you had sent us this information about Lonely Sun, and I was looking at it, and I was like, oh, this is a cool art style, kind of cool mechanic. But the thing that really grabbed my attention is kind of the inspiration for the game and the the thought you've kind of put into, into some of the mechanics and this idea that it's meant to be sort of a metaphor for life. And um, I thought you did a good job of talking about that in your email, and I was hoping you'd, you'd share that with people that might be seeing this that hadn't heard about Lonely Sun. So what's this idea of Lonely Sun being a metaphor for life and the way you're designing this game that way? Well, let me begin by saying that I'm one of those kind of space nerds out there, and everything that's space-related, black holes, suns, gravi gravity, whatever, all that stuff really kind of was used as the inspiration for this and I really wanted to create something that was a little different because mechanics wise, you know, it's a platform game so it's nothing new. Uh, even style wise, it's not exactly new. But I thought I wanted to inject a little bit of a backstory, if you want to call it a backstory behind it. So it's not just a simple platformer where you tap tap, shoot stuff and get a jet back and you leave. So. The whole metaphor for life kind of came a little later. Like, as I started developing, you know, the concept of the game uh, and using gravity as the main mechanic for you controlling the player, uh, I realized that, well, one, we're an amateur kind of game in the game studio, right? Mm -hmm. So every, to me, at least personally, it was super new and I had to learn Unity. I had to learn a little bit of 3D. You know, you got to read all the books, mm -hmm. you know, how to do stuff. And then you see other people that made it and they tell you something else. And you're like, you know what? This is so confusing. So I was like, well, at the end of the day, 
every single thing that we do, even in life, you know, there's obstacles. You know, you go back from square, you know, back to square one. You go, you know, you repeat certain things. You know, you realize how complicated things are. Mm -hmm. But when you dissect them, you realize that it's not actually complicated. Hence, the actual simple game mechanic. Mm. But the way you get to that point, the way you develop the game, the way you design it, the way um, you have to kind of overcome all the different obstacles in the actual game or even in life or whatever, all those things, when you add them all together, you realize that, well, not only you have to learn as you go, you have to kind of remember what you've done before, what was happening, because if you look at the game, it's not a procedural game, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is in stone. So every time you play a certain level, it's always the same. So you got to remember what you've mm -hmm. gone through before, you know, what killed you, where to pay attention, where, where not to. And all those things, to me, kind of, I realized that this is basically a mirror image of what life is, yeah. right? Like you go through certain things, you learn, you know, you get knocked down, you get back up, you start again, repetition, repetition, you know, and at one point I thought, well, maybe repeating so much content and so much stuff wasn't really a good idea. But then I, a friend of mine told me, uh, you know what? Nature does it all the time. Repetition, mm -hmm. you know, it seems to be the natural kind of course of evolution and, you know, creation. So I was like, well, it, it really is a metaphor for life because even if you look at the gameplay itself, it's a simple premise, but it's super hard. Mm. And that's what everybody is saying. Like the game is super hard. It's easy to learn, but it's hard to master, right? right? Mm. So all that stuff, and when you add the biggest thing, which is no checkpoints, yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's when I thought, well, you know what? Life doesn't really have checkpoints. Right. You know, I, maybe I kind of pushed it a little too hard, that notion of, no checkpoints and does life have checkpoints and people are like well it's a game but then my whole thing wasn't really to make a simple game mm -hmm. you know super mm -hmm. easy game my whole thing was i'm trying to mimic certain events in life or in the cosmos mm -hmm. you know universe you know and they're not exactly easy you know they take time they take patience you know you gotta overcome certain things you know and there is no do-over you know, right. once it's going, it's it's going, you know, and if you mess up, you start from the very beginning. Right. And that was the other major thing I wanted to touch on. And you make a point in kind of your press release that, yeah, no, there's no checkpoints. Like if you mess up, you're starting from square one. And I wanted to know if that was something you you started with in your original inception of um, Lonely Sun or if that's something that kind of developed later on, because I think it's an interesting um, discussion to be had about the balance between. Uh, the fun of the game versus your your message. And I'm, I'm sure there's some people out there that are going to be turned off by the fact that there's no checkpoints. Um, but I still think it's a really respectable choice because of the thought behind it. Um, so where, did the, was that a decision you, you made from the beginning or is it something you came, came to? Well, that was yes and no. Just to give you an example, when I was kind of – uh, beta testing the actual game with a couple of friends every single time somebody started playing the first couple of words that came out of their mouths were ah, this <laughs> you know every single time and then I realized you know what that's maybe a good thing because to answer your question at the very beginning Lonely Sun actually instead of having like three stages per level per planet mm -hmm. it had one long one it was one giant long level, and then it had checkpoints. It had, I think, three or four checkpoints. But then, as I started developing that idea behind it, which was the metaphor for life, and how there is no, oh, I'm gonna save here, and <laughs> right. I'll come back to it later, you know, I was like, I gotta stick to my guns, I gotta, you know, kind of rely on what the story is. I got to believe in what I wanted to do. And I knew that this game wasn't really for everybody. You know, I know a lot of people were going to get thrown, you know, thrown off by it. So 
there was checkpoints at the beginning, but then as I kind of divided the levels and started, you know, developing that idea of the metaphor, I realized that, you know what, I'm not going to do checkpoints, you know, I'm not going to do checkpoints. I want it to be a game that was more geared towards kind of the serious kind of hardcore kind of mobile gamers, sure. right? And, and, at, and at the end of the day, you know, I really want to believe that this is a proper iOS kind of mobile game. Mm. It's more of an experiment for me, more of a thematical kind of idea, kind of experiment to see like how people would actually perceive it. And, and again, like you said, you know, a lot of people, the first thing that they say is like, you know what, dude, it looks awesome, but no checkpoints. Right. Really? <laughs> so I kind of decided to actually stick to the original idea and be yeah. like, you know, if you're going to go, like go all the way. Yeah, Don't absolutely. Don't make any compromises. Absolutely. Um, the last thing I wanted to kind of touch base on before moving into talking about you as a developer and how you got to this point um, was the art style, which I think is really cool. It's kind of a very angular, um, almost I'd say postmodern kind of look. And I wondered why you decided on that, especially where we're talking about a game that is dealing with the idea of the cosmos and stuff like that. I could see kind of doing a more realistic or, or um, just a, a couple of different ways you could have stylized the entire game. So why, why that style? Well, there's several points. Well, one, the low poly kind of style is something that I've actually never done as a as a digital artist, designer, whatever you want to call it. I've never actually played with that idea. You know, it's one thing to make like a low poly kind of background. It's mm. another thing to make an actual 3D object. Sure. So yeah. at the very beginning, I was like, well, I want to try something different. I don't want to do flat graphics. There are so many games out there that actually do that. So. Yeah you know, repeating sprites and it's the same thing. So I didn't want to go the realistic kind of route because unless you're going to really show things, you know, how they look in reality and how, you know, how realistic they are, you know, there is no real reason for it. Also, um, this cannot really <laughs> hold that much. Limitations of the, of the medium. Exactly. Gotcha. Limitations of the hardware. So, and, as I started kind of looking, you know, for inspiration on low poly and, you know, how to actually achieve that, I realized that, hey, you know, I can totally do it as, a, as an artist, you know, I can experiment with it. And the more I kind of, the more I kind of dug through it, the more I kind of developed that idea, I realized that the idea behind the game is so deep, for the lack of a better word, mm. you know, it's not a simple kind of premise it's so cosmic uh so one way to actually make up for it you know in the actual gameplay is that i wanted to simplify things a little bit and that's why you know the low poly style like you have a very serious topic you have a very serious idea and motivation behind the game but what you actually do is very digestible for the lack of a better word because i knew that you know if i if i went the realistic route there's going to be a lot of people that are going to go, well, this is not real. <laughs> like, well, I know if I go flat, it gets a little repetitive and a little sure. boring, at least in my ways, in my opinion. So I wanted to experiment with the low poly. I thought it looked really nice, especially when you add like actual materials, the lighting a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's a little pushing the limits of the device. Yes, I get it. <laughs> Uh, uh, but then at the same time, to me, it was more of an experiment. And the more I kind of developed it, the more I realized that, oh, it actually looks really, really cool. Yeah, and it does. So, it does, so that, absolutely. Uh, so that's, uh, that's basically the, you know, the long story short, you know, you have a simple visual style that reflects a very complex idea. Makes sense. Um, so transitioning from talking about Lonely Sun to kind of get in a window into you as a developer, uh, what brought you to independent game development? <laughs> well, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, I'm still trying to figure it out, to be honest, because I used to be a super hard, hardcore kind of gamer, mm. you know, back in the day. You know, even like starting with Doom and Heretic, you know, and the Ataris and all that. I've always loved playing games. 
And as I grew older, um, I didn't really have the chance to play that much. Mm. But I've always been interested in the actual process, like how do people actually develop games? You know, what goes through their minds? Like, how do you come up with an idea and then translate that idea into an actual game? So I kept watching like, you know, Romero and all those idols that I have. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I can try and do the same thing. And then I found my, my partner, my buddy, Steven, uh, Steven Ritchie, who is a genius when it comes to coding, mm -hmm. you know, because creating, especially in Lonely Sun, creating the gravity kind of code in scripts, that was a huge kind of undertaking, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. And, and we've been working together for a while, you know, on a professional level. And we've done quite a few things. And he's always kind of done projects like this, like, mm -hmm. you know, games or little apps here and there or whatever. And then when I came up with the idea for Lonely Sun, I was like, hey, do you want to try this? I know it's a super highly saturated market. You know, everybody wants to make it, you know, and create something that's really cool, like Monument Valley and the right. Alone and whatever. So we were like, you know what? We got to give it a try. You know, you never know what's going to happen. You know, you can't just rely on, you know, what people say online. Oh, you're never going to make it. You know, this is crazy, whatever. So when you combine that, you know, his skills and my skills, and we're like, you know what? let's give it a try, you know, and let's see what happens. And the more we kind of explored that idea and the more we kind of developed it, the more we re realized that, hey, we have a prototype that actually works, <laughs> you know? So I'm like, there's probably something in there. So after like seven months of learning how to do all that stuff, you know, learning Unity and all that stuff, I realized this is actually super fun, you know, and what got me into indie dev? Well, it was the actual journey. Yeah. To be honest. You know, my, to be completely honest with you, like our main kind of motivations were never, we're going to make money and that's it. Right. Money and, or nothing else. So for us, it was more about, it was more of an experiment, right? Like we just wanted to see like, here's our thought behind this. Here's what we think, you know, here's the final result. What do you guys think? So, but again, I, I'm a gamer, you know, I love doing this. Sometimes, to be completely honest, I really don't play that much mobile games, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is crazy because I'm a PC guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm one of those. Uh, always will be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but at the same time, again, like the actual journey, in, you know, like all the obstacles that we got to do, you know, the design, coding, like, all those things when you put them together to create a story because in itself each game is a story right like whether it has like a serious plot or not and all those things i've always been kind of interested in exploring them but i've never really had the people around me to actually make it happen so as soon as we hooked up we're like hey let's give it a try yeah, and so good. far it's been pretty good awesome um so with of course following right after the i don't get that much of a chance to play games uh anymore we're gonna ask the question of what games have you been playing we like seeing uh developers as gamers and what they enjoy playing when it's not their own game uh do you mean like mobile games or whatever mostly? what have or you whatever. what have you been playing in the the little free time that we all have um doom doom nice the new Doom. Um, I'm one of those kind of dedicated old school Doom players that, you know, I loved one, I loved two. Yeah, the third one was a bit, eh, okay. But as soon as Doom 4 came out, I was super excited mm -hmm. because it reminds me of my childhood. Yeah, sure. You know, and uh, I started playing that. Um, I used to play WoW for like six years. <laughs> used to be pretty hardcore but not anymore um mobile games i gotta say i've been playing a lot of alone um again the monument valleys 
Um, there's quite a few kind of new, small, kind of indie kind of games that I do, but mostly I kind of stick to first-person shooters. Yeah. You know, and so far, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, it's good. <laughs> you shoot stuff. Uh, but yeah, but mostly Doom. Whenever I get a chance, I try to actually, you know, improve my response time and all that. And cool. I suck. Maybe. Because <laughs> I'm getting old. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, man, mostly first person shooters. Cool. Um, so to kind of bring things to a close, are there any other indie developers out there that you think are doing something really cool with what they're working on? Um, especially if there are things that you think people might have um, not heard of. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I've been on Twitter for the past, like heavily for the past like month now, and there's so many. Oh, I know. <laughs> there is so much, and I can't, to be completely honest, like I can't really pay that much attention because every time I see like a screenshot or something, I always comment mm. on it, but I haven't really seen final kind of ready to play kind of games already. And I know this sounds like very douchey, uh, <laughs> but I can't really point out or single out like a couple developers or studios that actually, um, well, they're all worth mentioning, to mm. be honest. You know, they all, everybody does like an amazing job because um, I think it was you guys that said, you know, unless you make a game and fail, you don't know how hard it is, and yeah. you can't really appreciate it. So quote from uh, Dan Amrich, that is kind of one of our guiding principles. Yeah, exactly, and, that, and that's the thing, man. I can't really point out a single game, but you know, if you think about the indie dev, indie game kind of community, like there is so much passion for stuff. It's true, you know. And I actually yesterday I got a private message. I can share this with you, uh, <laughs> even though the whole world's going to see it. Uh, I got a private message yesterday saying like, um, hey, dude, you know, I checked out, you know, your game. It looks amazing. Whatever. Do you want to check out mine? And I was like, sure. Yeah. No I saw the game and then the guy, while I was kind of checking the website, uh, he sent me another message saying, you know what? It's not as good. You know, it doesn't look, you know super polished or anything, you know, um, so you gotta, he basically apologized for it. And I was like, you know what, dude, like, don't, like, every single game out there has a beauty of its own. Like, you cannot compare yourself to this game or that game or whatever. Like, as long as you put your heart and soul into it, like, you enjoy doing it or whatever, that's all that matters, you know. There's passengers for every train, man. Like somebody's gonna appreciate it, right? So I started tweeting, of course, about it, and people were like, "Oh, that's actually pretty cool." I'm like, "See, <laughs> like, you know, people, you know, don't never rely on what, you know, never compare yourself to other people. Like, do whatever you want to do, almost like what Apple does. Mm. You know what I mean, yeah. <laughs> They're like, "Nope, we're gonna do this." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and people flock yeah. to it. Exactly. You got to believe in yourself and just, you know, keep doing what you think is right. And that's pretty much it. You know, there is beauty to every single thing. There is no bad game. Cool. At least I've been. <laughs> <laughs> well, inspirational wor words to bring us to a close. Um, thank you, Nick uh, Mihailov, for talking to us about Lonely Sun. Pleasure, and uh, you can find more information about Lonely Sun down in the uh, details below.